Hi everyone, I'm Mark Dijker, Developer Advocate at Diagrid, where we enable developers to build and run modern high-scale applications using open source technology such as Dapper. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Dapper Cloudflare Queues binding, a new feature that has been introduced in Dapper 1.10. I wrote about this binding earlier this month, this is the blog post, the link is in the description. Cloudflare recently announced Queues allowing developers to send and receive messages with guaranteed delivery and integrating with Cloudflare Workers, a fast edge computing platform. Dapper, the open source distributed application runtime, is often used in event-driven applications. Dapper provides a set of standardized API building blocks that simplify microservice development. By using the bindings building block, developers can use input and output bindings and either trigger their apps or invoke other resources without having to learn resource-specific SDKs. Because of the common set of APIs that Dapper offers, developers from any background can use the binding to publish messages to Cloudflare queues without needing to know the Cloudflare SDKs or adding that dependency to their codebase. Let's do a quick demo where we send messages from a Dapper app written in TypeScript, the producer, to a Cloudflare queue that triggers a Cloudflare worker, the consumer. The source code for this demo is available on GitHub, the link is in the description. I'll put this blog post on the side because we can reference to it. So before we start with the code, let's have a brief look at the prerequisites. I advise you to clone this repository because it has the final solution already for you. You need to install the Dapper CLI, you need Node. I'm using the Cloudflare Wrangler CLI to create the queues and to deploy the consumer application. And what you also need is a Cloudflare paid plan since queues is a paid option. And if you haven't done so already, you need to enable queues in the Cloudflare dashboard. So what we're going to do in this video is we'll create a Cloudflare queue using Wrangler. We're also going to deploy a consumer Cloudflare worker. The code is already in the repository. And we will run a local Dapper application that will publish messages to the Cloudflare queue. And then the consumer will pick up those messages from that queue. So I'm already logged in Cloudflare Wrangler, so I don't need to do that anymore. So the first thing I can do is create a queue. So we're going to copy this syntax here, Wrangler queues create Dapper messages, and Dapper messages is the name of the queue. So I'm going to paste it in here, make this a bit bigger. Now creating the queue, and now it has created the queue. So that's done. The, the queue is there, and when we switch to the portal view, of Cloudflare, then we can check the queues, and then we can see that the queue has been created. Perfect. All right, so now let's move over to the consumer Cloudflare worker that will pick up messages from the queue. So this blog post describes that you can create it from scratch, but you can also just refer to uh, step four if you're just using the code that's in GitHub. So this is the code, this is the, the worker function, um, it's just a very small function. It's a queue method that just reads messages from the queue and logs them to the console. What's very important is the configuration in the wrangler.toml file, because that needs to have this queues consumer uh, attribute and you need to provide the proper name of the queue. So in this case, the consumer function is completely ready, so I just need to publish it. Okay, so now Wrangler is publishing the uh, worker function. So it's uploading it. And uh, we can actually check again. It has indeed published it. We can verify that in the portal by going to workers. And there's now a consumer function. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use Wrangler tail to actually tail the log of this consumer function because it will console log all of the messages that it will be receiving. So let's start a tail and then we will move over to the producer function. All right, so it's starting the tail. So now we can look at the producer Dapper application. So if you look at the producer folder here, so it's a TypeScript function here and it's referring to a binding name called Cloudflare queues. It's referring to a binding operation called publish. We create an instance of the Dapper client, and then we specify a message, hello world, and we are doing a for loop. And we create 10 messages of 
hello world, including that number. Then we use the client and we're using the binding API and we use the send method. And then we will refer to the binding name, Cloudflake use, and using the binding operation, which is the publish uh, and the message. So this is how we are using the Dapper SDK uh, to use this output binding to push messages from Dapper to Cloudflare use. So this function will send 10 messages and then it will be completed. So how does Dapper know where to send these messages to? Because all it knows is a binding name called Cloudflare use. Well, that information is in this YAML file. We have a binding.yaml file here and there is some metadata here. So this is the name that's referred to in the code called Cloudflare use. And this specification is specific to the Cloudflare queues. There's also some additional metadata here because we need to specify a queue name, Dapper messages, we saw that earlier. There's also a thing called worker name because what this binding will do under the hood is it will create another Cloudflare uh, worker. And that's what the Dapper API will be talking to. And this Cloudflare worker will actually put the messages on the Cloudflare queue. There are also a couple of keys low in this file uh, but that's all explained in the blog post. All right, uh, so I've talked about the binding and I've shown you the node application. So now it's, it's time to run this locally now. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to now run the Dapper application locally. And hopefully we will start seeing some messages in the log tail. So now the first thing that you're gonna do this, it will take a bit longer because it will first create this Cloudflare worker, which the Dapper runtime communicates with. So that's what I'm doing now. It's deploying the worker at this URL. And once that is deployed, it will actually execute our code. And that's doing it now. So now we are receiving events in our consumer worker. So that proves that we can actually send messages from Dapper to Cloudflare use. So this was a rather quick demo. Please read the blog post for all the details. If you have any questions about this binding, feel free to join the Dapper Discord and ask your question in the bindings channel. And the Discord link is in the description as well. Stay tuned for more videos about Dapper and new features and components. Until next time.